We have now left the main road. We're following on this uh, forest trail, this hunting trail, to where Desiree said he shot at six o'clock this morning four gorillas. Four, meaning three females and a baby, which got injured in the process. And he left at four this morning and uh, killed them at six. We now uh, where they have started cutting and soon we should be at the road which hopefully will take us to Lomi this afternoon and the films to safety. Wildlife photographer and conservationist Carl Amon has spent the last decade documenting the wholesale slaughter of great apes. His outspokenness has earned him the wrath of many African governments. He got held up uh, at one road junction where the police wanted to interrogate us. Carl will stop at nothing to highlight the issue and to expose the culprits. But despite the impact of these horrific pictures, little is being done to stop the carnage. People feel, why just chimps and gorillas? I mean, there's a lot of more endangered species out here. I agree. I mean, the giant pangolin is probably more endangered. They take it. They eat it. Uh, why aren't you making a fuss about the giant pangolin? But the fact is, if you can't make an issue out of our closest animal relatives being eaten and uh, wiped out, how can we hope to motivate anybody to do something about the giant pangolin? Aman's base is his home in Yanuki, Kenya. From here, he single-handedly exposes the world to the real situation. He believes not enough is being done to halt the commercial bushmeat trade, and time is running out. I really first got interested in this bushmeat issue in 1988. My wife and I were traveling on one of these legendary Zaire river boats between Kinshasa and Kisangani. And on this seven-day trip, we saw hundreds, if not thousands, of primate carcasses and all kinds of other species coming on board in form of fresh or smoked meat. And it really surprised me, the quantities involved, and I really started wondering how big this market is, the trade is, and how sustainable it might be. Bushmeat, as it is known, is a thriving business in central West Africa. Anything from crocodiles and monkeys to chimpanzees and antelope are readily on sale. Traders make little attempt to conceal their goods as government officials turn a blind eye to the rampant commercialization of the bushmeat trade. No laws are enforced, even when it concerns highly endangered or protected species. Traders buy the bushmeat from hunters and transport it to urban centers where it fetches increasingly high prices. One-fifth of the world's tropical forests are found in Africa. These are the richest ecosystems on the continent. The four-story high canopy with its thousand-year-old trees is home to abundant endemic animal and plant species. One major threat is bringing many of these to the verge of extinction, and that is logging. Africa is the world's third biggest producer of tropical timber, with the European Union providing the biggest market. Increasing demand for tropical hardwoods sends loggers deeper and deeper into virgin forest. A widening network of roads is cut in order to get to the new areas and later to transport the trees out. These roads give hunters easy access to previously unreachable areas. Logging companies have come under intense scrutiny from environmentalists over the issue of sustainable logging. In the production country, they're very powerful. They are the law. 
Uh, so they know that. So if you're going to go and talk to them on doing something on the ground here, there's little response. And they know basically they can get away with it. So the, the pressure has to come from the uh, consumer countries. You know, if the consumer is educated what sustainable logging means uh, in terms of not just cutting trees, but in terms of fauna, of wildlife, uh, maybe that's where any, a difference could be made. One species particularly threatened by logging and the bushmeat trade is the bonobo, or pygmy chimpanzee. Only discovered in the 1960s, little is known about these mysterious creatures. Their highly developed social structure and behavior and marked difference to the more common white-faced chimp make them unique. They have no alpha male, and so there is seldom any aggression in Bonobo communities. They are only found in a small corner of the Democratic Republic of Congo and nowhere else. Free of sexual competitiveness, aggression, or rivalry between clans, this may be one of the most harmonious societies on Earth. A tragic byproduct of the bushmeat trade are the orphans. Claudine Andre, who was born and grew up in the Congo, has created a refuge for baby bonobos. Are you born there? Hmm? <laughs> Carl Amman has watched the Kinshasa sanctuary grow and grow as increasingly more victims come in each year. The first one I received four years ago and after we try to to have the permission to um, uh, to see this, all the baby come in from the boat and and the people try to sell it. The big problem in the beginning it's not only the physical problem, it's a psychological problem. They are in very very bad psychological condition when they come after the separation with the mother. They refuse to, to live without the mother. So we take care of the baby bonobos like, like human baby. And it's only this, only this condition then can they accept to live. Buende, buende. Ils peuvent rire comme les enfants. When they... <laughs> now it's a big solidarity between all the bonobo. And when you you play too much with one of, of them, another come to to help. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's terrible. They refuse to live, they refuse to eat, they are just in a corner and waiting for die. Carl enjoys taking time out to play before the hard work starts. He's about to leave on a fact-finding mission to wild Bonobo territory to assess the impact of logging on them. Joining Carl is a biologist from the Royal Zoological Society of Antwerp, Jeff Dupin. <laughs> Another big difference between bonobos and common chimpanzees, which made the bonobos uh, uh, very well known and made a lot of scientists becoming interested in, in bonobos, is the fact that bonobos use sexual contacts as some way of communicating. So you can say that for all animals, including gorillas and, and chimpanzees, sexual contact is only for reproduction. Uh, with bonobos, as probably also for humans, sexual contact is used as a way of, of communication. Whether when, for example, there is a lot of stress at the big food resource, males with females, but also males with males, females with females, and the oldest of the community with the youngest ones have sexual 
sexual context at that moment to try to reduce the, the stress situation. And this is very unique in the animal kingdom. Generally speaking, uh, bonobos can be regarded as the hippies of the tropical forest. Chimpanzees are much more aggressive and they uh, have wars going on between communities. Bonobos don't have it. The third member of Carl's expedition will be Pierre Verheja, a vet practicing in Kinshasa who has close links to Claudine's sanctuary. It's no mean feat to get into Bonobo territory. The trip starts with a wild three-hour flight in a rickety Russian cargo plane. Their destination is a small town on the edge of the Congo River Basin, called Basankusu. The pilot is pretty informal, and so is the in-flight catering. Nerves are setting in. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is one of the most unstable countries in the world, and they know it's not going to be a tea party. In Basankasu, the standard Congolese welcoming party is there to greet them. The authorities in this part of the world are notoriously difficult, as are the logistics in a country that is constantly at war. Today, the powers that be prove easy to please. shopping for supplies, prices depend on how well you can haggle. The same holds true when hiring the ubiquitous banana boat. The size of the pirogue, that's the boat, is important. They must carry two weeks supplies and fuel and decide on the jumbo model. I mean, he said he has managed this boat with eight uh, barrels plus people. So Jeff says, yeah, but the people must have been in the barrel. <laughs> From here on, there are no roads, and the only way to travel is local style via the vast labyrinth of tributaries feeding the mighty Congo River. Their final objective is the Yekokoro, a tributary of the Congo which will take them into the heart of Bonobo habitat. Bonobo chimps are only found in this limited territory on the south side of the Congo River. Jeff is their guide. Having spent three years studying Bonobo behavior in the area, he knows it well branch of our ancestor and the ancestor of the chimpanzees in general was about five million years ago and then two million years ago you had the Congo River which became a, a natural barrier between the, the population north of the river and the population south of the river. The population south of the Congo River became the Bonobo but the Bonobo always lived in a very stable environment, I mean the tropical rainforest, uh, which should have food throughout the year, in opposite to the, the savannah where the, the chimpanzees more or less went to. So it might be that just a hypothesis that Bonobos resemble more to our common ancestor than chimpanzees. It might be just one of the hypotheses. But it makes it even more interesting to do a, a socio-ecological study on, on the bonobos. The first night of the journey to the Yekokoro is spent in a Lebanese logging concession. This is a common scene in the Congo River Basin. Yeah, I mean, this is some of the real serious tropical hardwood which comes out of Central Africa. I'm not sure which type it is, but some of these trees look like they're hundreds, if not thousands, a thousand year old. It's very obvious that they will not regrow in our lifetime or you know, many generations' lifetime. There go tear off with guys with guns again. Everybody's hassling you and everybody has a list of new taxes they just sold off the day before. Carl is here to collect first-hand information on the ground and he gets it with his trademark tenacity and determination from the loggers themselves. 
And they have just taken the opportunity to go out with the crew this morning to go to the roadhead where normally the hunters hang out. And uh, there were a few hunters here. We have asked them uh, about the existence of Bonobo in this area. And uh, pretty predictably, uh, there is not much left. They said they shot one female Bonobo about 16 months ago, but they haven't seen a single other Bonobo since. After spending the night in a small village locally known as a Gunda, the team is feeling upbeat because this Gunda is at the confluence of the Lapori and Yekokoro rivers. They finally arrived. As always, they question the locals about the real situation. Are there any bonobos here? Uh, Jeff is asking which kind of uh, chip they find here, and they are showing the bonobos, definitely, and no other species. And then we ask them if they are eating the bonobos, and they are saying yes, we are eating, and it's very good to eat. The next Gunda is more tricky to reach, but proves rewarding when the chief produces the regional government's official price list for bushmeat. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Okay. It's the, it's the Republic uh, Provence Territoire. It's the, uh, the territorial office. I suppose it's the local administration for each region. The local administration. Yeah. Is, uh, Given, he's now going through his list. This is the offre du jour. <laughs> That's a good one. The menu of the day. A bigger monkey like a chimpanzee uh, is... Uh, is about four dollars or five hundred thousand. The smaller macaque is two hundred thousand. The team is invited for a meal with typical Congolese hospitality. This is fufu, but they make from um, cassava, and it's well prepared. They just prepared it for us, and it's now ten o'clock in the morning. You're eating fufu and fresh fish. I don't know this one, but this one is some uh, not named uh, golo, some kind of catfish. But the other one. Like a tilapia. Tilapia? So? Yeah, apparently there's no substance to it and it doesn't taste like very much either. <laughs> but it doesn't taste like fruit. <laughs> we haven't got much of a choice. I'm talking about the food for the fish is good and tasty, but this stuff tastes like bloody nothing. Pressing deeper down the Yekokoro, they collect information wherever there's human habitation. They're nearing a logging concession owned by Sifazel, a sister company of the German multinational Danza. It's the biggest logging concession in the DRC. Danza has been stonewalling Karl for years, and so he's sneaking in the back door. Uh, we are here in the middle of the Congo River Basin. Now, Sifazel holds a concession here which is over a million hectare. This is the one concession which includes a huge part of the Bonobon range. Uh, we had asked Danza to invite us to come and assess what's happening in this concession, to assess what's happening in terms of sustainable logging, but also in terms of the bushmeat trade. They turned us down on several occasions, so this is the main reason why we are here today, mainly to look over their shoulder and um, to find out what's going on and why they rejected uh, to invite us uh, on an official visit. Tomorrow we'll go to the market, which is our main objective, just across the river, and see what's really going on, to what extent the logging company is involved in the trade of meat and in the supply of cartridges. Yeah, with uh, these geographical positions, it's called, I can point out the different gandas between the two rivers, the Yakokora River and the Lomako River, which should be plenty of uh, bonobos. So, with this data, we can find out where people are living, and by questioning people, like we are doing this week, we can find out where are the biggest hunting pressures, and then we can also try to find out the reasons for different hunting pressures in different reason, uh, regions. 
where people sell the meat, where they uh, can do the truck for bullets or other things. On their way to the market, they stop at another Gunda and ask the usual questions. What have you hunted recently and where are you getting your gun cartridges from? We have a porcupine which is the most desirable meat, that's a hundred thousand almost a dollar. Then here we have a small bonobon, uh, that's the hand here. And this is obviously a, a big bonobon piece and he's going to bring out more. To some Baraka, Mukasoki Masue Coti, Boas, if for Zala Zarina Masu Zalekoya, but Commander Soki by ye. The Soki by ye to Fando Bebo. They were buying the, the cartridges coming to the place with uh, the boat from Tifosan. The price of the cartridges is uh, very high at the moment because there are no cartridges on the, on the market. No one is bringing them to the market. And uh, the very reason, therefore, is that with the war in uh, Congo Brazzaville, the factory stopped to work. So there is a shortage of uh, cartridges on the market. Ah. So if there was cartridges on the market, he would prefer to hunt with a gun. But with this weapon, he can uh, kill nearly any animal, uh, monkeys, uh, chimps, or even great antelopes. These are the arrows. It's a piece of wood on the point of which they put uh, poison. Any animal, uh, monkey, even chimps, will die after three or five minutes. Uh, a very big animal will die after 25 minutes. It's Jeff's first time back since he had to leave his research area because of the war, and already he has seen the Bonobo crisis is worse than ever. So you have some Nyama, huh? Ask him what kind this is an antelope. Fully loaded pirogues tell the team that they've arrived at the entrance to the market. Some of these traders have paddled for two days to get here, and it's a big occasion. So now at this moment uh, we are going up to the, the marketplace uh, along the Ekokora, the marketplace I was uh, three years ago. We are joining Papa Yang, I know from, uh, from that time. And at this market place every second week on Saturday always people from the forest will meet workers of Sifazal to do some uh, some trade they come here with uh, fishes or meat and they hope to find their medicines uh, clothes and other things the market is pretty inaccessible but when Carl sets his mind on something nothing will stop him Small fish, looking like a barracuda. Look at his teeth. Must be a tribal meat eater. These markets have been happening for centuries. It's always a joyful occasion as people come to trade their goods and tell stories about the tiny communities living deep in the forest and dotted along the rivers. An amazing variety of forest goods are traded here, a natural supermarket that supplies all their needs. <laughs> But traditional village life has been radically changed. Simple bartering has given way to a money economy. We 
it's a medicine against amoeba. Sufizo employees provide goods that were never available before, like wire to make snares and gun cartridges. They also buy up the bushmeat, which will later be sold at vastly inflated prices in the urban centers. This sm uh, smoked carcass of a bonobo has just arrived. It feels and looks relatively fresh. The heads and the hands were probably left in the forest. And if you can find the hunter, we probably can establish where it was hunted and by whom and get the rest of the story. But this is definitely a bonobo carcass, which is for sale. How much is the price? About 200 Belgian francs. The price uh, of this carcass is $8. <laughs> Some people argue that bushmeat has always been a traditional food source and that it's arrogant and culturally insensitive to stop locals hunting. That in the past, the villagers only took what they needed and were wise enough never to overexploit the forest. However, the logging companies have brought in hundreds of employees whose massive demand for meat has placed an unsustainable pressure on the forest, its animals and its people. So this is the bonobo hunted by Atanas, it's about 15 kilometers from here, in this direction, south of the Ekokora. He just left in the morning and came back the same evening with his uh, with the bonobo. Carl and his crew are heading back to Basankusu. A desperate sense of hopelessness and depression sets in. They've seen seven slaughtered bonobos in seven days. It's frightening to think of the statistics for a whole year across the entire territory. We're here at Issan Sani, which was the first part of the logging concession Sifosal exploited. This particular part of the concession was used from 72 till 84, and this is the port where we are. This is the one building which is left behind. Banyama Mingi, Ibele, Ibele. So he's saying that before Sifosal started the work, there were a lot of animals around here, even elephants, chimps, antelopes of different kinds. After the work, there is nothing left. Okay. Sifosal hasn't built any school or dispensary, so when they left, there was nothing behind as uh, social help for the, for the people. The expedition is over, and they are heading back to Kinshasa. From the air, the forest looks pristine, but they know the reality is very different on the ground. An even more daunting challenge lies ahead, opening the eyes of conservation bodies and the world to how desperate the situation really is. The establishment, the conservation community established in the countries concerned, they don't like the message because what it seems to imply is that they are not efficient or effective in dealing with this problem. And maybe that's the case. You know, it developed on their watch. They were there in the last 10 years when the loggers moved in. There were no, uh, you know, no uh, laws of conduct or unwritten or written rules for the loggers how to behave. So it developed to the present crisis scenario on their watch. So highlighting it now results in being attacked uh, on the basis that it's sensationalizing the issue. I have a problem with that. Meanwhile, the hunters continue to penetrate deeper and deeper into the forests of the Congo River Basin. Time is running out for the Bonobo chimpanzee. And that is a great loss for humanity.